Hey guys, Jonk Simulations, and today is a very special day. So we are kickstarting the Microsoft Flight Simulator development series, okay? So this is episode one, getting started. Now this entire series is going to be tailored towards the individual who wants to get into creating an aircraft for the game, but doesn't know how. This is day one. So I know that some of you guys are extremely excited for this coming from my Discord group and you're ready to learn all the technical right here, right now. I'm sorry to say this is episode one, boys. You know, this is getting started with Microsoft Flight Simulator and I'm going to be tailoring that towards the very beginning person starting from day one to day release. So, um... Let's let's get started. Let's not waste any more time here. If if you if you're new to who I am, you know, like I said, I'm Junk Simulations. I've created multiple aircraft for Microsoft Flight Simulator. Simulator. I started with the Discus 2B glider, which you will not be able to find right now because we are revamping that and re-releasing -re that here soon with the Discus 2C remodel. I did the Edgeley Optica mod that's on FlightSim.to. Um, I am part of a development team called Got Friends, and we developed the GBR3, which is releasing today on Microsoft Flight Simulator's marketplace for both PC and Xbox. If you like what I'm doing, you like this series, the best way you can help me out is support me and my friends with Got Friends, and go go buy that aircraft today in the marketplace and start supporting our projects and then like you see in the background here this is our new um, Grumman F4F4 World War II aircraft that we are actively working on and we have a few more a couple that we've semi announced a couple that we haven't announced um, there's lots of exciting things happening on the forefront of Microsoft Flight Simulator development and my team so once again thank you for joining this video I'm glad you guys are here and uh, we're going to be starting off as if you don't know anything about this. Um, so let's go to my predefined PowerPoint here, trusty PowerPoint, and let's get it. So requirements. Requirements to get started. You obviously need Microsoft Flight Simulator. You need the latest Microsoft Flight Simulator SDK module and the latest SDK samples. Now normally in the old version you didn't need any samples, but you do in this one because there's some required tools that you're going to need to want to touch, like the SimVar Watcher and things that are in the samples folder. So let's stop right here on the PowerPoint and we go ahead and show you how to download these two things. So inside Microsoft Flight Simulator, if you don't know how to access anything with developer, today is the day, okay? So you want to develop, let's go to options here, let's go to general options go down into developers and hit the on button you're now going to see this dev mode um, toolbar pop up this means that you are in developer mode make sure you apply and save that so it happens every time you start the game and you now have um, toolbar okay so if you go to help we have this SDK installer core you're going to want to download this okay and if you click download it's just going to open up a website and it's going to instantly start downloading the core. I already have it, so I'm not going to do that right now. And then the next one you're going to want to download is the samples. You're going to definitely want to download the samples. And then if you want a good aircraft sample to start out with, go ahead and download the DA-62 sample. I'm, I'm going to be showing you another method, um, my method that I created here, um, that I believe is a better startup method. Um, and I'm not going to skip by any details here. I'm actually going to show about three methods to start making an aircraft because everyone does things a different way. Um, so yeah, samples, the core installer, and if you want, the DA-62 sample. And then there's some video tutorials and stuff in here. But basically, those are the two things you're going to need. So back to the PowerPoint here. Next thing you want to do is install Blender. Now, if you don't know what Blender is, Blender is a free to use 3D modeling tool. And I hope that we have some people big at Asoba watching this video and or figuring out what this, this tutorial series is all about because I'm going to stress right now, Blender is the way to go. They officially support 3ds Max. It's a nice program, don't get me wrong, it's a nice program, but Blender is free to use. Blender is available for anybody to make 3D models. And if you want to support the community, start, you know, supporting Blender. That's the best way to do it. Um, 
this is you know free to use and a great tool and there's some great community members that have developed some Microsoft Flight Simulator tools which we'll jump into next that work great with this application so this is what I recommend using for your 3D tool and this is what I'm going to be using in this series so if you're a 3D Max guy I'm sorry um, you're going to have to figure out the methods officially documented because um, I'm using Blender for this tutorial sorry but not sorry I love Blender and I love you know the community of uh, free open source development so um, go ahead and download Blender once, once again that's your 3D modeling application next thing you're going to want to do is get an add-on for Blender and specifically there is a Blender to Microsoft Flight Simulator add-on that you're going to need now there's actually three add-ons okay um, I'm going to be talking about each one and what they mean so if you go to Google here I'm going to open up all three right now so you can see what I'm talking about. There is a um, Blender 2 Microsoft Flight Simulator. And it's this um, first link right here. It says Blender to Microsoft Flight Simulator Toolkit on FS Developer. So I'm going to open that. Then there is a Blender to Microsoft Flight Simulator 2. And then search GitHub after that. And it's this one right here by TML1024. Go ahead and open that in a new tab. And then there is going to be the Microsoft Flight Simulator 2 Blender 2 Microsoft Flight Simulator. And um, that is right here. It's the importer exporter. You'll see it because it's by FlybyWire. I'm sure you guys recognize their aircraft, you know, the A320NX. So go ahead and open that. Now let me talk about each one here. We're going to start out with the granddaddy of toolkits, the Blender to Microsoft Flight Simulator Toolkit. Okay, it is version 0 .40, and the last time it was updated was on the 23rd of September 2020. Now this was a very great tool, and I say was because I don't use it anymore. And if you use this and you're currently watching this video on the getting started, even though you're an experienced developer. I'm going to recommend a different tool and the reason for it is because this is not maintained or updated anymore it is still a great tool don't get me wrong you can do everything well almost everything you need to do still with this tool to get an aircraft in the game um, but my only thing is it's it's kind of been dead in the water and it's been dropped by the official developers and I support it completely it is the foundation to everything we know it's the granddaddy of add-ons but I feel it's time to move on as a developer and so that's what I'm going to do. I'm not even going to download this in the video to, to show you what it is because there's one that is exactly the same thing. So what can I be talking about here? Well, I'm talking about the Blender to Microsoft Flight Simulator 2, <laughs> number 2.0. And these these contributors right here, these three men, you can go ahead and thank them. They are, they, they are so good to be able to... to uh, take this under their belt so so what is this basically that they, they talk about it you know there was a release they talk about the toolkit that we just had open up here you know version 0 0.40 they, they talk about it it's been dead in the water um, people haven't been able to see any public releases since September and you know it's hardly ideal so they have took it upon themselves to start updating this toolkit to be more up-to-date as new you know new Microsoft Flight Simulator tools come out new official documentation comes out these guys are taking that tool the granddaddy tool and they're they're um, doing as much as they can with it to make it modern to update it to fix things that were wrong with it to begin with and it's a github which means it's a, it's an open source you can do some you can report issues pull requests discussions it's great so these guys are doing the right thing I support you if you're watching this video I highly support you thank you for all you do and um, let's jump into it so we go to releases this is what we're going to be using for the tutorial series and uh, go ahead and just download this blender to Microsoft Flight Simulator 2.zip and what I like what they've done here as you can see with release 0.41 they're using the exact same um, numeric method that the other one did which was 0 0.40 they're just building on top of it because they're they're not you know trying to make their own tool they're using the, the existing tool and they're just building on top of it so you're not losing any functionality nothing's different 
they're just building on top of the same tool and making it better. So that's why I say don't use that old one anymore, the granddaddy. Go ahead and use this new puppy. Um, she she does more. She does more, and she's you know getting good stuff on there every day. So seems like these guys are pretty good at keeping it up to date, and hopefully they continue to do so. But yep, this is what I use. And then the third tool is called the Microsoft to Blender to Microsoft Flight Simulator. Now, Fly by Wire uses this tool religiously for both import and export of their 3D models into the game. I don't. I use the other tool for my exports. I will not use any other tool for exports um, because the best way to explain it is Fly by Wire is modifying an already existing model. So they, they need the ability to import that into Blender from Microsoft and then export it back into Microsoft from Blender. So their tool is specifically designed to do so. And there's a lot of functionality in there as well. Um, but I strictly use this tool only for importing 3D models to do either you know a, a 3D livery or to look at it and see how an animation is done. Um, but I use this tool strictly for troubleshooting purposes. I don't use it as a practical export uh, purpose. And I'm sure there's guys that will disagree with me or they want to use this for export. Go ahead. Um, that is your prerogative. But in this video, I will only be using this tool for import so I can show you guys how things are done in the game. And I'm not going to be using it for the final export. So this one's a little more difficult to under... Well, I mean a little bit more difficult to install to do so you're just going um, down here there's in installation instructions they talk about how you copy the add-ons IO scene into your um, blender installation so what they're talking about specifically in here is this add-ons IO scene folder okay so the best way to do it since they don't have any releases yet no public releases just go to code and hit download as zip and then once you've downloaded that um, you're going to go ahead and um, you'll, you'll have that new folder here. Go ahead and extract it. And then in the extraction one, you're going to have this new add-ons folder and you're going to see the IO scene GLTF2 underscore Microsoft Flight Simulator. Go ahead and copy that. And before I do this, I'm assuming you guys have downloaded and installed Blender. If you haven't done that already, please do that. Um, so yeah, now you're going to go to your local disk. You're going to go to Program Files. You're going to go to Blender Foundation, the Blender version you have installed. Um, and then you're going to continue into that same version number. You're going to hit Scripts. You're going to go to Add-ons. And this is where you're going to go ahead and hit paste inside your add-ons folder. I already have this, so I'm sure it's going to ask me to replace it. I'm just going to hit replace. And there you go. You got this new add-ons folder next to the original GLTF exporter for Blender. Now you have it specifically for the Microsoft Flight Simulator. Okay. Now, let me talk about a couple things that we've kind of already went over here. So we're, we're almost there, and then I'm going to talk about each one just a little bit deeper. So now what you need next is Notepad++. If you don't know what Notepad++ is, it is a free-to-use um, text editor that has some extra functionality in there that is very saucy. It helps us out very well in development. Okay. Now, once again, there's going to be people on here that go, why don't you use Visual Studio? Why don't you use this text editor? Why don't you just use Notepad? It's built into the PC. You can. I'm just recommending Notepad++. It's easy to use. It's great at organization. It's just a text editor, guys. Relax. We can all do the same things, okay? So go ahead and hit downloads. Download the latest release. Once you've downloaded that, as you can see here, it's oh, it's just a text editor, okay? Um, for viewing text, there's some extra functionality in here for tools and things. We'll get into that a little bit later, but it's great for organization, for quickly going through things. When we talk about XMLs here in the future and CFGs, this tool is perfect at finding things that you need to find, okay? So go ahead and download Notepad++. 
And then lastly, we're going to talk about a 3D model, but we're going to kind of put that into the consideration state. So let's go back into this. So you've just installed the latest SDK and SDK samples. So where are they? Okay. So once you've installed them on your local disk, you're going to have this new folder called Microsoft Flight Simulator SDK. Now in here is where you have everything that the SDK installed. You're going to have that samples folder if you chose to do samples. You're going to have uh, all the tools needed. So you're going to need these because these are what build your aircraft. So you need the SDK. Don't even try to skip this step. You need this, okay? Um, basically, that's always in your local disk um, that you have Windows installed. It's on, it's on your C drive, just called the Microsoft Flight Simulator SDK. This is where I recommend you create your personal folder, okay? So I have a Microsoft Flight Simulator 2 custom where of course I have my current projects, you know, my Discus, my Optica, my GB, my Draco, and my F4F. So this is where I recommend you create your folder right next to it so it's just easy to go back and forth when you need to, you know. Um, this is where I recommend creating a custom one. So this is what we're going to do today. We're going to be calling it Microsoft Flight Simulator Dev Series, okay? And this is our custom folder. And uh, this is where I wanted to drop that. That's where I'm going to leave it. So now let's go back in. We're going to talk about Blender now before we continue. So you finally installed Blender. You dropped that add-on into Blender. So if I go to Blender here. This is Blender. It's a, once again, free 3D modeling tool. But if we go to Edit, Preferences, um, let me go ahead and check. Actually, let me just uninstall that so I can show you how to do it. If I, if I search Microsoft Flight Simulator, here is that tool by Fly-By-Wire, the, you know, the IO Scenes GLTF2 add-on that we just installed by dragging and dropping to the actual program files folder. Okay. Now I'm going to show you how to install the other one that we were talking about. Like I said, um, if you use the... Uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator to Blender 2. This one was a little easier. Remember I told you just to go to releases and download that zip? Well, all you got to do is once you're in Blender, you just got to go up here, go ahead and hit install, go to wherever you downloaded that. Here it is right here. Hit install add-on, and it's installed. And you'll know it's installed because if you check it, to make it active, make sure that you make the tool active. You can go to File, um, Export, and if you see Extended for Microsoft Flight Simulator, you know you're good to go. Also, if you like add a simple cube, and you have a Microsoft Flight Simulator material parameters, you're good to go. Uh, that means the add-on's installed and working. Okay, so we'll get back into this program a little bit later in the series, um, but there you go. That's how you do it. Now let's go back into PowerPoint. It's time to talk to you about considerations, okay? 3D modeling and 3D marketplace. I'm gonna be upfront and honest with you right now. This tutorial series is not gonna be teaching you how to 3D model in Blender. That's not my goal. That's not what I wanna be spending my time on. If you wanna do that, there's plenty of YouTube tutorials. You know, Blender Bros is a good one. There's a lot of people out there that will teach you how to 3D model in Blender. If that's your niche, if that's something you want to get interested into, I applaud you. Go ahead and start learning now. Be, uh, it, it's going to take you quite a bit of time to start learning the basics of that. Um, but I'm going to tell you how I started. I didn't know anything about Blender. About a year and a half ago, I've never even touched the application. Um, I just wanted to get an aircraft in the game. So there's 3D marketplaces. Okay, so this is bulletin number two. The best 3D marketplaces out there, and the only ones I would truly recommend, are CG Trader, Turbo Squid, and Sketchfab. These are great marketplaces for uh, 3D models. Like you said, you can go here, click Aircraft on CG Trader, and it'll display a bunch of aircraft 3D models. Now, there are definitely things to consider here, and I'm going to be completely honest with you guys once again in this video. 
I hate the stigma that the community has put on us developers using 3D models. These 3D models are here. This is a marketplace in itself. These individuals are selling their 3D models to make money. So there is nothing wrong with finding a 3D model you like, making sure it has the appropriate license. This is royalty free. This is appropriate to use, okay? This guy is selling his model as royalty free. There's nothing wrong with it. I can buy this aircraft today and I can make it in the game. I can even sell it since it's a royalty free license, okay? So I hate the stigma people are putting on the forums right now that if we release something they're like, oh, he just bought this 3D model and made it fly in the game. Well, we all know there's a lot of work involved in that. It's not just buying a 3D model and putting it in the game. So this is how I started. My Discus 2B glider was purely bought on a 3D modeling website. And I have nothing against it. This is a great way to start. This is something that we should all consider to save time. Um, for example, this uh, F4F right here that we're working on. That is bought in, in CG Trader as a base and then we've highly modified the 3d model like highly modified we almost had to remodel a lot of the components on it but it's a good starting point and so if you have that opportunity don't 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 feel bad about doing it i guess is what i'm saying it's a marketplace in itself this is how these guys you're supporting these guys so you support them so people can support you through your work as well don't don't feel bad if you're not good at 3D modeling yet and you need to come in here and you need to gather some resources is kind of all I'm saying with that. Um so yeah, you got CG Trader, Turbo Squid, which has, you know, more great um air airplane models out here. And then you got Sketchfab, which Sketchfab's also great um for for aircraft as well. I think this one specifically doesn't have a section, you just gotta search aircraft and uh, you got some more resources in here. Um, but, one, but once again, um, do your research, make sure that you're choosing the right models, like I said, with the appropriate licenses so that you, you're doing everything right with them and that if you do buy their 3D model, you're not screwing up by releasing a mod or eventually if you plan on releasing it as payware or something, that you're, you're not selling somebody else's work. You need to ensure that they have the appropriate license and that they're giving you the go ahead to do so. Um, and the best way I always do it, if it's not royalty free, let's say it's an editorial or something, I will contact the 3D model directly and be like, hey man, your, your project is perfect for what I need. And, and for most of the time, they'll modify the license and give you a modified license for like an increased uh, uh, purchase price or something like that. So if you're, if you're not planning on getting into 3D modeling or if you just want to jump right in it like this tutorial, go ahead and consider getting yourself a nice 3D model. Now, this is what I talked about. I posted links all over the place about this tutorial series coming out. Um, this is where I purchased a model yesterday specifically for this tutorial series. So I found this yesterday. This is by uh, Hamu Hamad. And... Uh, I applaud the guy for putting a $2 royalty free license on this model. That's my kind of guy. That's what I'm talking about. So I found this great model and I want you all, if, you're, if you want to follow along with this tutorial series, go ahead and support the guy. I mean, come on. That's the, that's the coolest thing I've seen on a 3D modeling program in a long time. So this is, this is a, a, a nice little $2 royalty free aircraft here, okay? So they got a nice exterior. We, we got some in t interior tool, I mean, gauges, and uh, we got the yoke stick, we got rudder pedals, we got a throttle, we got a fuel selector. I mean, this this thing is killing it, okay? For $2 royalty free, this is a perfect place to start. I was extremely happy when I found this model because this is going to be able for, to, to aid me in teaching you everything you need to know about the game. So I'm going to go ahead and go to my purchases. Once again, $2, great, great purchase there. And I'm going to go ahead and download the aircraft propeller native.blend because we're working in Blender. Uh, there is the all motions.blend where I'm sure the ailerons and everything are animated. I'm not going to do that because I want to be teaching you guys how to do that animation yourself. So I'm going to download the native.blend and then I'm also going to download the textures. 
And so yeah, that's where we're starting with this. So enough about 3D models and websites. You, you know the resources now, you know where to find them. Uh, let's move on. So aircraft data, okay? So this, this one is huge. Um, if you guys are making an aircraft for Microsoft Flight Simulator, you really need to be spending some time on these. Make them accurate. Look up pilot handbooks. Look up official flight data. Look up switches, things on the aircraft, you know, how, how many degrees deflection do the ailerons move up and down. Look that stuff up because nobody wants to fly an aircraft that's not accurate, okay? And I, I've been to blame for a lot of the stuff I've done on even my development when I first started out. My discus glider, for example, I'm ashamed I even put that out there. I'm glad that it's out there and I'm glad that over 100,000 people have had fun with that aircraft. But this is why I'm currently, it's all, it, you can't find it. I took it off lightsim.to on purpose yesterday because we are releasing the Discus 2C, which is a remaster of that here soon. And I, I'm i so glad I'm revisiting that first aircraft I ever did because I'm now with the Got Friends team, we're taking our time and ensuring all the aircraft data is lined up. The wings are modeled to spec, um, the weight, everything about it. I mean, the way the flight model is, manufactured um it's flying like it should you know so take your time gather that data and make sure that if you're getting into this game you're not just trying to make a cartoony aircraft and dropping a brick of a flight model on it nobody likes to fly a boring plane it can be the most beautiful thing in the world and there's a couple air aircraft developers that come to mind with this but it doesn't fly good or <laughs> you sit in the cockpit and you can't click anything and um, yeah, this is where I'm going to be talking on the next point, which is market saturation. And there's a couple points with this. The first point is you need to consider what kind of aircraft you're going to be making for the market. The market is saturated, okay? And it's saturated with general aviation specifically right now. And if you want something that stands out, and you want people to download it and you want to start building your name up so that people start supporting you and you can start getting more resources and you can start getting better, getting bigger, then really consider that market saturation. Now, if you're just coming in it and you just want to have fun, you just want to put your Star Wars Starfighter in the game, well then, you know, this is the place to be. I'm going to teach you how to do that. Um, just have fun. But if you're really getting serious about development, really consider the market saturation right now and start getting into something um, that you know people will enjoy or is maybe a, a little bit unique in a way that people want to play it. Um, yeah, so the next bulletin in here is individual versus team. And um, this is big. Creating an aircraft alone is quite an undertaking. However, that is pretty much where everybody starts. That's how I started. That's how my other guys that I work with got gravel started. I mean, we've all done this alone. You have to. You pretty much have to start alone to learn um, what you're doing in general. I mean, I don't even think a, you can form a team unless you're all trying to learn how to do this together, maybe thanks to this tutorial series or something. But um, for the most part, you all start out alone. And then you need to start considering a team once you, you start getting better, you start getting some knowledge, and start considering a team. And by considering a team, we'll talk a little bit more on that in the support group. But um, let me show you an example here. Um, like you said, you all, if you don't know what I've done, I've done a bunch of individual projects. But somewhere down the line, I, I ran into a group of buds, okay? So there's me, there's Got Gravel. 270 Inc. and Microde, and we are the Got Friends development group. This is our team. Um, we're not necessarily official, like you know, Aerosoft or um, something like that. But this is our, our 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 team group, our development group, where we yes, we do we do do projects alone. We do do projects with other people, but when we do projects together, we're Got Friends. And this is a kind of what what I'm saying with team is find people that can um, aid your weaknesses, find people that 
um, have different things going on so that you all have a complete understanding together. For example, I'm all about coding and project management, um, you know, PR, getting things out there. That's my role on the team. Got Gravel, he is a master at uh, lighting effects and flight model work. I'm sure you've all flown something that flies a Got Gravel special, okay? And so he's known for his flight models. 270 Inc., he is known for his texture work. I mean, look at this. Everything you see in these photos, it's not possible without his gorgeous texture work. So he is a master at texture. He, he uses Substance Painter, Blender. Um, I'm not going to be doing a lot of that in this tutorial because I'm not a texture artist. As you can see, that's why I'm part of a team that has a texture artist. Um, but, yeah. And then we got Microde, who is brand new. Welcome to the team. He's our newest and... Um, he is our official 3D modeler. So, as you can see, w w with his work on the F4F, he's making this thing the most accurate um, um, Grumman F4F4 that the simulator world has ever seen, um, as far as I'm aware. And uh, it's it's all thanks to his 3D modeling work. And and that's why, like, I'm telling you right now, I'm not going to be teaching you guys Blender because that's not my thing. My my thing's more about the whole process and the glue of the whole family. Well, Micro, his thing is 3D modeling. So, um, yeah, um, go find yourselves a team if you have weaknesses and you want to find someone that has strengths that you need and vice versa. That, that's the best way to do it. Or if you're undertaking a huge project like an airliner or something, you're going to need a team. Um, and so let's talk about team. Well, well, where do you go to find your team? Well, we go to support groups, okay? So this is... This specifically in the video, I've done this by what you need to do in order. This is what I feel in order is the most important support groups out there. And I'm biased, of course, because, you know, I've started one of these support groups. That I'm sure you can tell which one. It's highlighted in blue. But um, this is what I feel. So whenever you need support throughout this whole process, the first thing you need to do is go to the official SDK documentation. Before you jump on Discord, before you jump on Facebook or a forum and start posting your question all over the place, before you ask somebody to help you out, sometimes it's nice, you know, that someone's online and ready to go, but you need to go to the official SDK documentation first. And if you don't know how to do that, go ahead and just search the... Um, um, Microsoft Flight Simulator SDK docs or documentation and it will be the first link right here and this has so much information in it however I'm sure you guys are aware because you're watching this video it's very lackluster in information as well but there's going to be things specific in here and this is the specificality of it so let's say you want to figure out how to do something like wing fold on an aircraft you know Go ahead and search wing fold. And there's going to be a bunch of stuff here that pop up that talk to you about wing fold. You know, specific carrier or uh, aircraft control variables. If you scroll down after a search, you'll see that uh, it, um, it should have highlighted it. Maybe that's only on mobile. But, um,. Um, yeah, it will bring up the search results. There's also stuff in here about, you know, starting out, you know, using the SUK, SDK, um, stuff about models, you know, um, examples. They give you examples on how you do things. This is the master, the, the master um, guide to how to do things. The reason why people like things like this video I'm creating right now is because it's easy to understand. If you can watch somebody, you can do it. This, on the other hand, this is, this is how I learned. I, I, I didn't have too many people to help me create an aircraft, you know, to learn all this information. This is stuff you got to ingest. This is all SDK documentation. You got to spend, go ahead and spend a few days reading everything that's in here that you want to learn um, because this is going to help you down the line and you're going to start to make connections. And if you read this before this video series continues into like episode two, I'm going to tell you you're going to understand the video series way more. Um, but even if something doesn't make necessarily make sense as you read it, 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 it's going to help you out in the long run. Um, and something I want to throw with the support groups here while we're talking about it before we start jumping into community support groups is find yourselves a mentor. Now, 
I, I would be lying if I said that I wouldn't be here today um, without certain individuals. And um, two of those guys are Oz Wookie and um, Alex from Touching Cloud. Without them, I wouldn't be able to create the mods that I've done. I've, all, I've been able to ask them very uh, you know, um, advanced questions. They've been able to help me out. They've been able to even contribute to my aircrafts. Um, so with, without those two guys, I wouldn't be here. And so I want to thank you on video officially for that um, and everything you do for the community. Um, and for you guys, go ahead and find yourselves um, mentors, whether that's in these support groups that I'm about to list or um, it could be something as simple as, uh, you know, someone who supports you and no one's going to support you more than yourself. So go ahead and but when you start getting to that point, you're going to need someone who really helps you out, someone who you can turn to. And in this case, I, 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 re I highly recommend finding that you someone who can help you in the community. So where do you find those people? So let's get into the next point. The next source after the official documentation I think is the most important is my source. Okay, I'm biased here, <laughs> and you're gonna you're gonna know why because I've created this community, the Flight Simulator Freelance Society. I created this for you. Okay, I try to stay active on this. As you can see, here it is right here, FS2. You'll see this nice little logo. This is the Flight Simulator Freelance Society. Now, if you just joined and you look at the rules and info. Uh, it, it's pretty simple. This Discord server is designed to help all developers and aspects of development. You know, feel free to help each other, browse, share your work, download. It, I, I made this for you guys. And uh, you may have seen us before because we're maintaining that huge list on the official forums of all released aircraft right now. Um, that's another undertaking I'm doing. But when you first join this server, you can go ahead and click a red apple if you're a developer or a green apple if you're just browsing. You know, you're just chilling out with everybody as you can see we're, we're pretty equal um so we got a bunch of freelancing developers up here in red and then a bunch of m members down here in green and then a bunch of people that are online that are still waiting to uh, choose one of those ro roles here but um we got a lot of people here that will help you out and there's general help sdk help blender help i've really set up these channels for you to come in and uh, ask questions and I'm going to let you know right now, if you need help with anything, Discord is the way to go. I know a lot of people like to ask questions on forums or they're part of Facebook groups. Dude, I'm telling you with Microsoft Flight Simulator, you go to Blender. Blend, I mean, not Blender. Go to Discord. Discord is where people are going to be right now. This is where you get information fast, um, where you help each other out, where you're seeing the latest and greatest, the development previews go to discord um and we got a lot of great people in here like you said if i go to sdk help and you look down we got bagalo we got destroyer these are great guys in the industry i mean you got hans hartman in here actively helping people um you know the developer of the the crj like doing so much so we got a bunch of good developers in here asking questions helping each other out as you can see always um being supportive sharing code um things that need to be getting done so if you want a good resource, I, I highly recommend joining this uh, Flight Simulator Freelance Society. I'm dropping a link in the description. as with a ton of links in the description. If you need links for anything, they're going to be in the video's description. And uh, so yeah, let's move on. The next one that I think is the most imp next important is uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator SDK Discord Group. Like I said, another Discord group. This one you'll recognize because it has a little settings icon on top of some clouds here. This is another great Discord that's uh, a little bit more aged than mine and a little bit more tailored towards guys who are doing FSX to native conversions and stuff like that. Um, so if you're more looking towards doing the conversion game from uh, an old FSX aircraft, I recommend joining this server and asking you a bunch of questions because there are a lot of people who have done stuff with that on this server. But once again, there's there's aircraft showcase or the, where people can share pictures that they've done. You know, there's some help. Um, and then there's some technical questions about Blender and gauges and stuff. It is another great resource, once again. Um, I highly recommend just being part of at least both of those servers, both mine and this server, in order to get all your questions answered. 
And then uh, last but not least, we have the FS Developer Official Forums. And if you don't know what FS Developer is, this is where I started development, believe it or not, back before these Discord groups were established. This is just a place for um, all simulators, whether that's FSX, P3D, Microsoft Flight Simulator, I mean, X-Plane, Aerofly. There's a bunch of developers here. It's not just Microsoft developers. There's a ton of developers here. Um, but like I said, if you go under Microsoft Flight Simulator, you go into uh, aircraft design, and maybe we look at others here. Um, they're, they're, they are pretty active, as you can see here, but they're not instantaneous, and some of them don't even have any replies to their questions they're having. Um, it's kind of sad. I, I used to be a big form user, but I think in this, this new day and age, a lot of people are going towards instantaneous communication, which is Discord. And Discord is where I'm finding all these people. Like, I can, I, for example, I can give you an example right here, Oz Wookie, one of my mentors, you know, someone who I highly look up to. He's created guides for multiple things. He was very active on here, and he probably still is active on here. Um, but I can find him on Discord so much easier. And um, Discord's just the place to be, man. Uh, I really like this because this has a lot of archived information if you're looking for something. I mean, there's 26 pages here of archived questions that will might be able to answer your questions that you may have. So it's definitely a resource to come look for questions or answers. Um, but if you're looking for more um, personal and uh, technical questions that answer towards your project go ahead and just pop into one of these official support groups and um, we'll be able to kind of help you out as good as we can so and then I put the official forums in here as well but you know the Microsoft Flight Simulator official forums are targeted more towards players than developers there there is some development groups in there but if anything, just know that everything you post in there is going to be mostly seen by players, you know, who are a little bit more judgmental towards things, especially if you're brand new in development. So be careful what you post um, in places. You don't want to be posting, you know, a day two of your 3D modeling, you know, endeavor where you might have just a fuselage modeled out or something. You don't want to be posting that in the official forums. Um, you're going to have a bunch of people eat you like sharks. Um, and that's just the way it is, man. These guys are official players. They're the ones who are, at the end of the day, downloading, playing, and purchasing your content. You don't want to disappoint them. So whenever I go to the official forums, I go there with a motive. I go there with an announcement, with some beautiful previews. I go there with something that's going to get people excited. I don't go there really to ask technical questions. Um, like I said, there are support groups for that on there, um, but I find Discord way more useful than that nowadays. So now that that was an extremely long what tools you need, the considerations, and the support groups, let's start getting into actually developing for Microsoft Flight Simulator. So I can close out PowerPoint. Thank goodness I do not like PowerPoint. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm in a, a school again trying to, try to teach you by PowerPoint. Uh, anyways, and, and let's go ahead and kick this tutorial off. So, like I said, we created this dev series. So what we're going to do, we're going to call this project Simple Aircraft Project. Okay, so I'm creating a new folder in here called Simple Aircraft Project. Now, there's multiple ways that we can make a project for Microsoft Flight Simulator. One way is to do it through the game. Another way is to do it outside the game. And the third way is to use some form of template, whether that's a sample project, or something of that nature. So I'm going to show you um, my method because I am sharing this method with the community and this is the method I prefer <laughs> because it's fast and it's easy. Um, so 
I have created this this thing. Let me go to my downloads. Oh, wrong one. I have created this um, Jonx's aircraft template. Okay, and if you don't know, I've actually posted this on flightsim.com. Oh, let me log in here. Oh, I'm so zoomed out. Okay, so I've uploaded this to flightsim.to under Jonx's aircraft template. And what I've included in this template is a project folder, perfect for first-time developers and new project templates, a Blender folder, which includes this really uh, <laughs> yeah, two-minute two minute modeling effort, <laughs> which um, is nice. If you want to learn how certain animations are supposed to go um, and you know how you do certain lengths and animations and how you do naming conventions in Blender, um, this will help you out. Um, basically, I created the whole thing that if you wanted to, you could plop it right into the game. You could fly the aircraft and then see the, the, the 3D modeling side of it as well as the coding side of it so you can understand the glue in between. Um, so this is what that template's for. And then also I have a tools fo folder which is links to the best tools as well as some extras. So go ahead and download that. Um, if you haven't already, because this is how we're going to start the project or the the uh, the dev series, and then I'm going to show you in here. So once you've downloaded it and extracted it, you're going to see um, three three ones. Okay, so the first one I'm going to start into is the aircraft template tools. There's README, which I've put in here, and you know, welcome to the development tools folder. So. Um, I talk about things, you know, Blender that we talked about, that Blender to Microsoft Flight Simulator 2, the one by Fly-By-Wire, there's something else in here that's called the Layout Generator, which is good, um, the Web UI Dev Kit, the Touching Cloud Effect Library, the Toolbar Window Template, the Localizer, this, this mod that I created for use included, and then the Package Tool, which is included, however, you get that as soon as you download the latest SDK. Um, so we'll be talking more about these tools in the future um, and what they do specifically. But for a quick reference, you can come in here. I've explained the use of what they do, how to install them, and where you can find them. So this is a quick reference for you guys if you want to find community links of how to do things. And then uh, I've created a creator aircraft mod U folder in here which is pretty self-explanatory. This is to modify already existing aircraft in the game. So if you want to make a, a livery mod for like the F-18 or um, something like that, or a panel mod for it, a sound mod for it, texture mod for it, I've included this as a template for you to go and change things so that you're able to make those kind of mods. Maybe I'll make a video about that specific type of modding after this development series if you guys are interested just let me know in the comments on YouTube um, but for the most part I'm teaching you guys how to develop an aircraft from scratch but just know that that option is there and this is a great um, template to use if you want to do that so let's go into our project okay so as you can see here I have this aircraft template project so I'm gonna copy everything inside of it I'm going to go ahead and go to that custom folder I just did for the dev series, the simple aircraft project we just made, and I'm going to paste that in here. Okay. Now you don't need the packages or the packages or the underscore package int folder. Those are generated every time you build, so you can just go ahead and delete those. Uh, you don't need those right now. So there's two ways now to do this. I'll show you the simplest method and I'll show you the manual method. Um, the manual method, I'll, do, I, I'll show you how to do it first. I'm not going to do the whole thing. But under each XML, 
And like you said, you can open up XMLs with Notepad, or you can edit them with Notepad++. Um, and as you can see here, it looks way different Notepad++ because it's nice and organized. So I recommend using that. But I've included under these uh, bullets here instructions of how to do things. You know, under project version, ensure your name parameter is set properly. This is what is seen in the community folder. So this is what it's talking about, project version, name. So this is what is seen in the community folder when you have a mod. So you're going to want to change that to what you want. Um, and then under packages, ensure your um, directory points to the name of the package definition. So I've included instructions on what you do here. And everything is like that. Whether you go into package definitions next and look at it, I've included more instructions. So you can follow those instructions and do it manually. But I'm going to show you how to, I do it. And this is how I think you should do it for this series. So just open up the game, Microsoft Flight Simulator. Go to Dev Mode. Go to Open Project. Go ahead and go to that folder you made, Dev Series, Simple Aircraft, and open the Aircraft Template Project. Okay. Once that opens, you should see two things pop up. You should see a project editor tab and an inspector tab. If you don't, in order to get them, you go here, you go to project editor to open up the project editor tab. And then to open up the inspector, you go to view and you click on inspector and it will pop up the inspector. So the best way to start editing this to make it your own template is to just create, click on creator aircraft over here. You know, company name, the creator. So this is Jonks. This is me, Jonks. The aircraft we're going to be doing is just, you know, simple aircraft. And um, I'm actually just going to call it Jonks Simple. Because it tells you right here, if you look under package names, this is what it allows. Aircraft name for aircrafts. Um, yeah, it, it tells you um, the strict rules and lettering that applies to it. So I'm just going to call this Jonks Simple. The manufacturer of this, I'm not sure. So uh, I'm not sure what this aircraft is. So I'm just going to go ahead and put CG Trader. That's where I downloaded it. The type, it is just a simple aircraft. The creator, once again is Jonks and then you can upload a thumbnail if you have one of your aircraft obviously we don't have one yet so we're going to skip that phase for now and then something that's really nice about my template which you're not going to find in any other template this is why I recommend using mine is I've included asset groups for you already so HTML manual PDF effects and your visual effects library so these are additional folders that are inside your um, project sources folder that if you start working with custom HTML and you drop things in the HTML folder it will copy it over to your, pro your, your package folder same with visual effects or effects or let's say you have a flight manual that you've put out in PDF form so people can learn how to fly your aircraft you can drop that in here so that when you export it and you build your aircraft it will actually drop all these folders in there automatically okay and if you ever have a question with that I have a readme assistant here you may delete any folder except the sim objects you don't plan on using and deleting them from your project editor in game so if you want to delete them from your project editor in game you just hit remove over here if you don't want to use these that I've included go ahead and just hit remove and remove them okay um, but I highly recommend keeping them. They don't do no harm or anything. Um, and this is real easy to teach you guys how to, uh, to start using those, okay? But I'm gonna teach you how to create one from scratch as well. So let's go ahead and, well, we modded all this stuff in here so far, and this is gonna be version 0 .0 0.0.0.1, the very first version of this aircraft, right? And then let's go to the second tab before I forget. Release notes, you know? 
replace the X's with this inversion notes. Okay, so I'm just gonna say uh, first version, you know, this is my first version, congrats. Um, and you can put the, the, ver the version number in here if you extend this further. There you go, see that version 0 0.001, and then you can put today's date if you want, you know, it's 12, I mean, sorry, that's the year, so 2021, um, the 12th, and it's the third, I think, today. And go ahead, once you're done with that, you've made all these extra changes, go ahead, go to project, hit save. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you guys how to add asset groups. This is a question that's been popping up a lot of people don't know how to add an asset group, okay? So let's go ahead and remove like HTML UI, okay? So yes, I'm gonna remove it. And then I'm gonna add one, the same one back just so you can see how it's done. So when I hit add asset group, if I go to custom, hit next, asset group name, this is the name of your folder. So HTML underscore UI under here you're going to want to hit copy because that copies everything in that folder and puts it in your package folder so you're going to want to use a copy don't worry about the group template and then hit create okay after you hit create you're not done so if you look in your folder you're now going to have a thing called copies in your package sources you know you got your packages your package sources you're going to have a thing called copies don't use that just hit delete Delete that from copies because you want to point towards this HTML folder that you've already made, right? And so what you're going to do here is you're going to next, you're going to click on this little arrow. You're going to click on that HTML UI you just made. Under asset directory, you're going to click these three dots. You're going to go to packet sources. You're going to hit HTML. You're going to hit select folder. And then under output, you're going to get rid of everything but the HTML UI. So it's just HTML underscore UI. Hit enter. And then hit save. Project up here, save. And now it's pointing towards the correct directory. And actually, you're going to want to do that right now while you're here with everything to ensure that you uh, haven't screwed it up. If it's your first time opening the template, you shouldn't have an issue just using it straight off the bat. But if you ever have issues where it's failing to build the, the asset directory, what you need to do is just go into each one, hit the three dots, find the package sources that it's talking about um, down here. And then uh, I think you guys are about to experience, oh, there we go. And then down here, hit enter. And what I was saying is you guys are maybe about to experience your first crash in the game. It's going to happen quite a bit. You're going to have a bunch of crashing, okay? Just letting you know right off the bat, prepare to crash all the time. Um, but that, that's how you create an asset directory, okay? So as you can see here, um, it didn't take my name here. I'm not sure why. So let me do that again. Jonks. Um, simple. And I think I need to update my package name. That's why. you got to click this update package name here to actually update it. And then once you guys start getting into uh, creating add-ons for the marketplace, um, which maybe I'll include later on in the tutorial series, uh, th this is how you start putting in your code that you get from a Sobo when you're, when you're an official marketplace seller. And then you put your price in there, how much money you make. You can uh, also create a marketplace. Yeah, I'll definitely include this in the tutorial. I'll just do it at the very end. But this is when you finally become marketplace seller with a Sobo and you can uh, start thinking about selling add-ons for people to buy. Um, so I'll put that in this series at the very end probably. And then, um, so the biggest one you want to check in here, go ahead and look on your creator aircraft sim object. We're going to want to change this name, obviously, right? This isn't creator aircraft anymore. So the best thing to do with that is to go into your package sources, into your sim objects, go to airplanes, and this is where you're gonna change it. So I have it set up so you can do creator, so junks, aircraft is gonna be simple, and the variant is just gonna be default. A variant is something like, let's say you wanted to create one with floats, you'd copy, you know, you'd paste that folder, and you'd say, hey, this is gonna be the float variant. 
or one with skis. These are uh, your, your separate variants. That's why I had the name variant in there. So we're just gonna deal with the one default for now, okay? So once you've renamed that folder, go into here, click on the three, go to your package sources, sim objects, airplanes, click on that folder. Go ahead and delete, every, or uh, you're gonna wanna keep it. So you're just gonna wanna delete package sources. So this already has it. If you're using my template, it should already be set up so that this is correct. The only difference is you just gotta type in the new name here, okay? So your new name is now Jonks Simple Default. And then here is where you're gonna to wanna to change. Um, oh, I forgot to hit enter, my bad. But yeah, you're gonna to wanna to change this as well. So simple. I gotta retype that, my bad. Junks, simple. Default. Make sure you guys hit enter when you're done with that so it saves. If you don't hit enter on your keyboard, it won't it won't apply it as you can see. So it actually applied it this time. And then you're gonna go project, save again. So at this point, you're all set up um, with a new project. So wasn't that simple? It's a, it's, it's a very simple project using this template that I have. Um, I, I, I only recommend using this template now if you're creating a project, whether you're an expert at this or simple. Like, come on, this is so simple. This has everything you need. So I really try to tailor it for everybody to use. And then I also, like I said, I made it all manual. So if you want to build this thing from scratch, um, you can. And I've included readmes. And uh, if you open up each individual one, you know, there, there's, not, there's not instructions anymore because uh, we saved it. Once you save it, it regenerates it. So, but there was, when you first downloaded it, there was instructions here. Um, but now that we've modified it, we're ready to go. So that is project management. That is how you create your first template. Now we need to figure out what goes in the package sources. So the effects folder is blank because there's nothing yet. The HTML is blank. There's nothing yet. The manual is blank because there's nothing yet. And the visual effects are blank because there's nothing yet. But in the sim objects folder, if you go all the way down, you're going to have the files I've included. Okay. And once again, I've made this as a template for everybody to kind of understand. So if you look at checklist, it's a blank because we're going to be creating our own in this series here. Um, model, there's an aircraft exterior, an aircraft interior, an extra which kind of explains some common template codes to be used. But then I also um, included um, stuff in here, you know. Update your exterior and interior names to ensure they match. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to talk about modifying this okay so we're going to start from start or from top to bottom and modifying this to make it ours so the first one is model but the first thing you're going to want to open is this model cfg and right here update your exterior and interior names to ensure they match your xml files and what that's talking about is these right here your xml's you want to match so as you can see here i got my in exterior is matching my my the same naming structure okay so what we're going to do is we're actually going to change this i'm going to call it simple exterior and simple interior xml okay now this is if you want an interior and exterior model i recommend doing that because it's going to save you a lot of time down the line but let's say you just want a single model for now you just want to be testing with a single model you're going to put a semicolon in front of interior and you're going to change exterior to normal and that way you'll only have to export one model and you can test it in game and and just use one single model but i recommend if you get into modeling we're going to do it right so go ahead and do exterior and interior we changed our names to simple so we'll go ahead and file and save okay and then now we need to change these names, like I said, because they're not referencing that anymore. They're referencing simple. Go ahead and change that name to simple and that name to simple. 
and then um, if you open up each one of these we'll get really deep into these later but for now you're going to look just at this LODs as you can see here my LOD is referencing aircraft exterior LOD 00 which is right here we're going to want to change that to be more personalized as well so what we're going to want to do is call this simple exterior save that and close that now open the interior one and once again this is referencing the interior one so let's call that simple and save that and this can be anything right so you you can change this if you're making you know like um a Boeing 737 you just type B 737 interior you know like make this yours um, it's kind of where I'm going with this whole modification of the template okay now that we've changed those names you might as well change these once you change these names um, they're unusable okay so I'm just letting you know right now if you're trying to download this template to see that blender file that I made in the game it won't work once you change these names because inside the actual bin file these these names are hard coded um, so unless you export new blender files you're not it's not going to work in game so once you've changed these names to yours they're just placeholders for blenders export okay so don't worry about anything anymore once you do that and uh, you can go ahead and leave that extra folder in here it's just going to be some nice information for you down the line next we'll go to panel um, we're not going to be touching panel today because there's nothing on the aircraft we need to worry about um, yet for panels. Panels, to explain what those are, those are like your HTML displays, so like your um, your navigation, GPS unit displays. Um, it can be, uh, you know, your, your HUD on the F-18, for example. Those kind of things are in your panel. We'll be talking about all that later in a different series. I mean, different series episode. Um, and then there's sound. Now, I recommend to get sound towards your project at this point. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. So if you look at that aircraft that we downloaded, it was like this. Um, um, I, I don't have it anymore, but it, it was that little. You, you all saw the aircraft at the beginning of this series. So what the best thing to do is to find your community folder. OK, and if you don't know how to find your community folder, this is where people are dropping mods. So there's plenty of tutorials online about how to find this community folder. Um, but it's basically in your, your username, your app data, local packages, Microsoft Flight Simulator with a bunch of lettering, local cache, packages, community. It's really complicated to find. That's why when I found it, I made a shortcut so I can always click on it and go there. Um, but once you find your community folder, go back one and then go to official okay and go to one store and these are all the aircraft that Microsoft Flight Simulator has in the game so what you're going to want to do right now and I think this is way better than using the DA62 or the simple aircraft uh, uh, template that they've had in their you know like up here like I said in their their samples the DA62 I would rather use this because this method is a better starting point so find an aircraft that resembles your aircraft in this case, I think mine resembles like a Cessna 152 the most. And so I'll go into Sim Objects, okay? And I'll go into the Panel folder now. I'm going to go ahead and copy these because this is just a good starting point um, to start with. So let's go back. Sorry, I'm getting a little sidetracked here. Go back into my Package Sources, into my Sim Objects, to the Junk Simple one. And we're going to go to my panel, and I'm just going to over overwrite these. Okay, and then next thing we're going to do is we're going to go into sound. And what's nice about sound in the game, sound just works based on what packs in here. Okay, so it's just referencing whatever sound XML is calling. So I can use the icon sounds, I can use the C152 sounds. You can place whatever sounds you want in here. They will work as long as you have the appropriate sound XML. Like I said, just go into this folder from your official, choose an aircraft that re resembles yours the closest for now, and then copy the sounds. And like I said, you're not going to be wanting to use these sounds in the final project, um, which we'll get to later in an episode. Um, but this is just a good starting point. 
so that you have something to listen to while you're developing. You know, you want to hear engines go up and down. You want something to listen to while you're developing because it's going to help you with troubleshooting to figure out if your engine's actually starting or not. Um, there's, a, there's a lot of stuff going down with that. Okay, so we got our sounds. Next, we're going to want to go into all these CFG files. Okay, so you got all these CFGs, FLTs, all this stuff. Okay. So you're going to want to copy everything except for the aircraft CFG. Okay, so go ahead and copy all that. Actually, we don't need this new checklist LOC or this um, um, aircraft LOC, okay? Or this notice, I guess, technically. All you need is the .FLTs and the .CFGs, okay? Once you have those, go ahead and copy those. And then you can paste them in here and overwrite everything that I had in here in the original template. And then you kept the aircraft CFG, so that's going to be the next one. And the reason why we kept this is because I've included in the template two folders. We have a texture base, which is what I think everybody should start using instead of just a texture folder. You know, a lot of these things just use texture folders. Having an actual set base will just help people understand when they're doing livery mods what your fallbacks are calling to. So I would do like a texture default or a texture base or a, a, a texture, you know, something. Or maybe just have a texture mod. It's up to you. It doesn't matter. Like these naming conventions don't matter as long as you reference everything correctly. So let's open up this uh, aircraft CFG and start talking about the, the separate um, files here. You may open that up and actually uh, in Notepad++. So in the aircraft CFG, I've included, once again, um, all the stuff for you to type in. So under manufacturer, you can go ahead and see there's two ways to do this. You can do it here manually right now, which I think is faster than doing it in game. So I would just do it manually right here because it's just as fast. You're going to have to type it in in game anyway. So I would just do it manually. So once again, this is going to be our CG Trader aircraft. Um, the type of the aircraft is just going to be simple. Um, category, do not touch. That's airplane. Um, you don't have to worry about anything else until you get down to this type designator. So this is what it's designated in game um, that you're going to see other people, um, the designation. For example, if they're flying around, you're going to see, hey, this person's flying in this aircraft. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and just put simp. <laughs> guess we're a simp in this video um, and then for manufacturer once again this is just going to be CG Trader um, and then template aircraft for our model it's actually just going to be simple aircraft now and this could just be changed to anything so once again if you're making just like a, a, a 737 this would be your 737 tack you know 400 or something like that's what you'd put in there for the model, right? Um, this is going to be a piston aircraft. Now, don't touch this engine type unless you know what the selections are, okay? Like, there's very few. There's like piston, there's jet, there's tur turbine. If you don't know what it is, don't touch it because if I came in here and I'm just like, uh, I want a dual piston double chuck aircraft, you know, or something. It's not going to work. Your game is going to crash. So make sure you, and I'll, I'll, I'll when we get into the in-game editor in the next episode, um, I'll be explaining this stuff more. Okay. Um, now we get into the pilot, which is nice is because I have this, once again, this template all set up for you. So you know exactly what to do. We're going to talk about the pilot stuff more in later episodes. Same with the effects in later episodes. So now you can start having loading stuff. Now this image, it doesn't work currently. This image name stuff, you can put whatever you want here. It doesn't work. So I just leave it there in case in future Microsoft Flight Simulator incorporates this into a change so you can have your own loading image. But tips, this is what happens when you're loading into the flight line. So the simple aircraft, was created by junks, you know? So like, 
as it's loading into the game, you're going to see this pop up. Then you're going to have I keychains, which we'll talk about later in Blender. Same with VR. I've included VR stuff in here, and we'll talk about that later in Blender. Um, and then we're going to start talking about our flight sim. So, um, obviously, I, I kind of did that wrong in the template. I'll go back and fix that. Um, but this needs to go here's the actual flight sim. This stuff is your services. <laughs> and the services are things in game like if you have if you want a fuel truck or a, a catering truck to come to your aircraft or even a small pushback or a marshaller to start out when you spawn on the, the runway. You change these from zero to one if you want it to happen. If not, you leave it at zero. But we're gonna talk about this more because I want to use the in-game editor for most of this stuff. Um but for now, we need to get this kind of all set up so it looks right in the game. So once again, this is going to be our aircraft template. So instead, this is going to be the title is going to be simple aircraft. And I'm just going to leave it as default right now. Now this model, panel, sound, and texture, what this is talking about is referring to um, these folders right here. So if you leave them at two, two um, quotations, it means default. So it's panel folder is calling from the panel folder. Panel to panel. Now, texture, as you can see, I didn't leave them in quotations. I put base because it's calling texture.base. So whatever is after the dot goes in here. So if I had a model dot two, then I would just have a two in here. You know? So you put this in here based on what your folders are named. Everything's based on naming. You know, this is why a lot of crashes that do happen. The first thing I'm going to tell everybody is go check your names, make sure they're correct. Um, but yeah, and then so let's continue down. So next is your description. So this is just your aircraft description. Now, once you start getting into a marketplace environment, you can start um, putting your description based on your LOC in here. But for but in this case, we're just going to put it at an actual type of description. So. This aircraft, you know, was made for the Microsoft Flight Simulator Dev Series. Manufacturer, once again, not sure what it is. So we'll put the CG Trader. Uh, model is just going to be simple. Variation is default because so variation is the uh, the the livery on the main menu. So if you go in game here. Let me just move these aside. And you just go to like your aircrafts. And you click on one, the liveries, how one says default, one says livery one, emerald gold, global freightways. That's this name, the variation. So the default's the first one I do, as you can see here. I use default with everything. Let's go down one more. So we got junks created by junks and then ATC ID this is just the original ID if somebody doesn't change it most aircraft you can go in here go to customization and you can change your call sign and tell number right and uh, we're going to talk more about having that on your actual model so it can be modified um, in later episodes but here's your default one so let's say they didn't go in there and do anything with it you'd want it to be um, something uh, by default so I'm going to do simp zero one so I'm simp zero one and then um, the rest of it you don't really have to uh, worry about right now we're going to talk about those later um, but uh, yeah that's basically where we're going to leave it so once you got that go ahead and hit save there and then you're ready so let's go ahead let's go into here and um, let's go ahead one more time go to open even though you have it open you're going to reopen it okay go to open go back to that simple aircraft project and open your aircraft template project And it does take a little bit. Microsoft Flight Simulator is just a little slow. OK, 
Okay, now it's reopened, uh, you're reloaded with all your changes, which is good. Now that you're reloaded with all the changes you've done with your aircraft, CFG, and all that uh, model folder stuff, you are ready to start working with the 3D model. Okay, so I'm going to show you just importing the model right now, and I'm, I'm not going to start working on it. That's going to be saved for next episode. So hopefully um, this whole project management is much easier than it was before um to set up you know uh i'm i'm doing this through a tutorial so it took me like you know what a, a good 30 minutes to show you how to do it but if if you're doing it without having to teach someone you're just clicking through and you know exactly what you're doing to do all this i mean it's going to take you five to ten minutes max so hopefully this is a way faster way for the community to do it you know i'm happy that i was able to kind of make a better template for people to start out with um and like i said you could use that template to discover how I did things if you use it through the beginner method, um, which is just you know opening the blender that was included and not changing all the names like I did and just seeing how it is. Um, which I'll, I'll show you right now actually, okay? So if I go to dev mode, let's go to open project. And um, let's go find that the one I uploaded to flightsim.to. I always click the wrong folder and go to my Jonks's aircraft template, remember this? So we're, we'll go into project, and we're just gonna open this one um, without touching it. We haven't modified anything, I just wanna open it to look at it. I'm not gonna actually modify it. Okay, now that that's open, once again, this is just the unmodified version as if you downloaded it straight from flightsim.to. Um, what you can do here, which is actually the way I have it set, is you can just go to uh, aircraft selection and you will now see the aircraft right here called mod manufacturer model. Okay, you can click on that. You can actually go into a runway And you can go ahead and hit fly. Like you said, this is the original one, so I have these, whatever you want to say. One, two, three. It's just all a big template. That's the best way to think about it. We just got finished, you know, kind of um, modifying the template. But I'm just going to show you how it is straight off the bat. This is what I want people to use to learn um, what how things work. So if we load straight off the bat here, we click ready to fly. As you can see, we're inside this really simple aircraft that I did in Blender. And I have it all working. So we got a propeller um, lever, you know, we got a throttle lever, our mixture lever. You know, we have moving rudder pedals. We have a working stick. Um, up here we have speed brakes. You know, we got our flap lever so we can change our flaps. We got all these lights that are actually blender lights these are not microsoft flight simulator lights these are created inside blender so i'll be um good stuff there we got a parking brake lever on and off um we have just a simple era um, um 3d display here for html code so you know how to do that we got landing gear lever um and then if we look here on the exterior oh we also I mean, don't forget this we have this pilot model that's the, the default base pilot model. And if you click on this, you can hide the pilot. If you click on it again, you can show the pilot, right? So, and then if we go to exterior, um, you can see how everything works. Our ailerons work, our rudder works, our elevator works. Um, I've made it so you can see the wheels kind of bouncing with gear compression. I've added prop as well, so like if I stopped the engine right now with Control shift e you're going to see it actually stop. You know, it goes through three phases, so there's the, the still phase, then you're going to see it go to the Pringle chip looking phase, and then you're going to see it go to the blur phase. And the same thing with the tires, the Pringle chip looking phase right, right now is the blur phase, 
and then I mean the, the I mean the the still phase, and then you're going to see it go to the, the blur phase as I take off. But basically, I've just created this simple aircraft in here, so that you can start understanding how things work. And if you go, for example, let's go back into that. Jonx's aircraft. If I go to Blender and I open up the exterior example, you'll see that this is the aircraft in here. Okay? And this is my left aileron, right? So I've named it aileron left. Naming doesn't matter here. What matters is the naming that you give it in the animation NLA track. And we're going to go through all this later. Um, just so you understand, but like for example, it's named aileron left PCT. Okay, so let me just quit that. So if I go into the model folder, and we look at the exterior XML, you'll see left aileron is aileron left PCT. So you can kind of see how the glue's starting to happen, okay, between Blender and Microsoft Flight Simulator. And now I'm going to be going way deeper into this next episodes, but I just want you to be able to understand that if you don't know anything about how it works and you just want to see how things are working for yourself and maybe start getting into it, because I know not everybody's a video tutorial kind of person and they would rather just kind of read and figure it out like it's a mystery. Uh, you know, and start unraveling it as they go. That this simple project, everything you see in this aircraft exterior code, is used in this little simple aircraft right here. And and, and same goes with the uh, the interior code. You know, I have the stuff in here about um, blender lights. You know, nav light blender, landing light blender. So I've included everything that's used here, including like the show and hide pilot mount model. How, how to do it and there's some simple notes in there as well you know node one is for forward aft movement node two is for left to right movement on the yoke rudder stick so we'll be talking about those more but but i'm just giving you kind of like a, a i guess a sneak peek of what we're going to be talking about in the future and but for now we finally in our uh our dev series we have our simple aircraft project we made and the final thing that you got to do on this now is you can just rename this so this can be our simple aircraft project and if you're worried about something screwing up if you open it the only thing you have to do in here is copy this name simple aircraft project open it up in the notepad or whatever and post that in the name right here hit file save and you're good to go okay so hopefully this is a a good start this is episode one i'm probably going to have each episode be about an hour and a half we're just coming up on that time um i'm really trying not to make these longer than that um i really wanted to do actually like short 10 minute tutorials but i know that you could not do certain phases of development in uh, just 10 minute tutorials so this series is, this is dedicated to a lot of time and like I mentioned earlier you know I'm married I got multiple projects I got a full-time job don't expect these episodes to be up every week <laughs> um, you'll get one about a week I would say uh, maybe two a week but Sometimes there's going to be stuff that pop up in my life where I'm not going to have time because i got other stuff going on. So if there's been a week or two that comes by, stay patient. I promise you I'm going to finish this one from start to finish um, and really help you guys out there. So hopefully this is a good start, a get started, how to build your first project in the game and that my template really starts helping you guys out. And until I release episode two, go ahead and download that mod on flightsim.to. And start looking around and it trying to get a little bit more familiar with how things are before I really start doing it from scratch. And um, yeah, I just want to say thank you guys for all the support you've given me. Um, specifically, all the support you've given us with the uh, Got Friends development group. Your support is 
you know, incredible. And I started this as one of you guys, you know, not knowing anything a year and a half ago, about a year ago. And here I am today releasing aircraft and being a partner are not a partner, but a marketplace seller with Microsoft, being able to sell aircraft in game. So, you know, it, it's a very awesome community to be to be a part of, to be part of this aircraft development community. And everybody that I've encountered is fairly nice and very understanding and wants to help each other find the solution. And I'm just glad you guys are here and taking your time. And before I leave, if I go to my main menu here, this I just got notified of this while I was making this video so I, I hope the rumors are true <laughs> like the notification literally just came up about 15 minutes ago if I go to marketplace and let's see here if I go to all full catalog Let's uh, go ahead and look at aircraft. There it is, guys. The GB R3 Special. This is our first payware aircraft we ever did, and it is now released, as you can see here, on both Xbox and PC. This literally happened about 15 minutes ago while I was making this video. And once again, it's kind of sobering um, to think that a year ago I didn't know anything about Blender. And here I am with a group of great individuals releasing an aircraft to the game for people to enjoy all around the world on either console. Um, and to just see our work firsthand and to have a fun time in the game. It's, it's, it's a very cool thing to experience. And here you, get, you guys get experience with me on video right now. So right here, baby. Go ahead and support us. I bet... The Xbox players are extremely excited to finally have a new add-on on the Xbox. I, you know, I hope they enjoy it. So thank you guys once again, and uh, we'll see you next time on episode two, where we get into importing that model we just downloaded. If you, if you want to follow along, of course, that model you just downloaded into Blender, and we're going to get into the aircraft editor. So, um, yeah, I'm excited for it, and uh, see you guys next time. Thank you again.